All right, in 4.3, we're going to look at this thing called the coefficient of determination. Um, it's this thing called R squared, which you may or may not have seen on your calculator so far. Uh, this section is going to tell us how good our lines are, not just what the line is. Um, so let's look at um, Ford Mustangs. And we're going to look at, um, let's see, we have 12 of them. We have their age as my x value. So that'll be horizontal. And then we have the price as the y value in hundreds of dollars. So hundreds of dollars means 256 times 100, which is actually 25600. So it's really 25,600. Um, so let's go ahead and do regression, and then we're going to figure out some new stuff. Oops, I already did it. Ignore that. So go to stat, enter the data. And then you're going to go down to that linear regression, a plus bx. And then remember to tell it to look at l1 and l2. And you get what's above. If you don't have r and r squared, we're going to turn those on in a second. So don't freak out. But you do need those in a second. Um, so let's, let's just round at the same time. So let's look at our y values to figure out rounding. So my y values currently have zero decimal places because there's nothing after the decimal and they have three digits. So that means we need one more of everything. So my y intercept needs one more decimal place. So 293.2 instead of zero, we add one. And so we need one decimal place. And then the slope is digits. So we need four digits, one more than three. Um, since it's a negative slope, we can subtract 25.59. And then we will go ahead and not forget the x. And that is our regression equation. Um, if you can see r and r squared on your calculator, great. Um, you don't have to do anything. If you do not have those, we're just going to, I'm going to tell you how to turn them on. You only have to turn them on once, and then you don't have to go through this process again. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit the button that says catalog, which is at the bottom. It's second zero. And then you just scroll. You have to hit the arrows until you... You have to hit the arrows a lot until you hit down, get down to diagnostic on. And then hit enter at diagnostic on, hit enter again until it says done. And then if you do regression again, R and R squared will be there. And if not, just send me a quick email or message and I'll help you get it turned on. And you never have to do this again, so it should be on. So we're going to look at those in a second. Um, this section, we're looking at r squared. And then we'll do r in the last section. Cool. So let's look at where they're coming from, and then we will interpret them. So a big question we might have when we're doing regression is, was it actually helpful? Right? Um, was it useful to do regression? So what I put on the right side is I did this, um, the regression equation. This is for the Mustangs. I graphed it. It's the red line. And then I found the square errors that we were talking about last section. So let's fill those all in red. So we're going to look at the sum of the square errors in a second. Remember, less area, less squares, smaller squares is good. Um, but could we have just neglected age so, and just found the average cost instead? So that's this equation on the right. That's average cost. Right? Like in Chapter 3, we didn't have a second variable. We just found average. So we're going to compare the square errors for average to the square errors for regression. Um, so to me, it looks useful. Notice the one on the right, those square errors are definitely smaller than the square errors on the left. But if there's not much of a difference, then maybe regression's not worth the effort. Wow. 
So let's check out the formula. We're not going to use it, but it'll explain what's going on. So what the formula is doing is it's finding the sum of the square errors from the average. So it's, I'm highlighting it in blue because it represents all of these squares. And then we find the difference between these squares on the right. So we're basically finding how much does it change by. Remove square error is the difference. right? How much error did we remove? And then we just divide it by the original squared error, which is the blue one. So it's basically like a percent reduction or a percent decrease, if you ever did these in algebra. Um, but the calculator gave us that number, so we're going to focus on interpreting it, right? We don't need to know how to do these crazy formulas. We need to know how to interpret things. So I'm going to give you two interpretations. I prefer the first one. It's a little bit more everyday language. Um, but the way I interpret r squared is it's the r squared percent. So r squared, like, times 100% because it's in decimal form. A variation in the y values. Um, are explained by using the x value in the linear equation. So it's a little weird. When we do a real example, it'll make sense. But it's basically saying, like, 50 per why are the y values not the same? The x value can explain 50% of that, or the x value can explain blank percent of that. And then the other percent, that would be, like, 1 minus r squared times 100%, is unexplained or possibly... Um, random variation or lurking variables. So let's just fill this out and then when we do the Mustang example we can make more sense of it. The more technical definition is really just interpreting um, this formula. So I don't really like this one because it's really technical and not everyday language but we can try it anyway. Um, but it represents the percent reduction Right? This is a percent reduction in squared error. It's like literally interpreting the formula. When we make predictions of the y value, whatever that variable is, by using the x value rather than just using the average. It's a literal interpretation of this formula. Um, I don't like it because in everyday language it doesn't really make sense. So I'm going to stick with the first one. So a few notes, and then when we do the Mustang example, the definition will make way more sense. Um, so r squared is always between 0 and 1, and that has to do with 0 to 100%. So 0% means no percent change, right? 100% means 100% change. Um, so near 0, then we think it's not very useful. It would mean that these are similar sizes. The error is about the same. So that's not very useful. Um, as we get closer to 1, it's more useful. So we'll say very useful close to 1. And it really just tells us how well the line fits. Um, tells us the fit or the strength. Right, how well, the, if the better the line fits, the closer to 1 it'll be. So let's go ahead and um, interpret that uh, Mustang example. So if you need to do regression again, go ahead and do it one more time so that you have r squared, and then we'll jump into the example. If you have to, if you lost it, right, go back and enter the data. And then we see r squared. We will do r in the next section. So r squared should be, I'm going to do four decimal places, 7822. Two. All right, so let's try to interpret that first definition. So it tells us this would be 78.22%. So 78.22% of the variation in the y value, so the y value here was cost or price, can be explained by using the x value, which is h. So 
This is basically telling us why don't all Mustangs cost the same? 78% um, of that can be explained by using age. And that makes sense, right? Cars change value based on their age. So that's all that definition saying. I think with actual examples, it's easier to interpret. So 78% um, of the variation in price. Again, why don't all Mustangs cost the same? 78% of it can be explained by age in regression. And then how useful was this? I would say pretty useful, right? Because it's near one. It was 0.7822. I would argue that's near one. And that's it for section 4.3. Um, I really do prefer this interpretation. I think now that we've seen it with actual words, it's not too bad. Um, it's a little vague here. so. Use this example to help more, I think. Um, and I'll see you back for 4-4.